Hi, I'm Riley. I'm a student of Location Sound, and this is the Sound Devices 633 Portable Recording Mixer. Because this device has six unique inputs on it, and you can configure it to write to the flashcard separate, separable tracks for each of the inputs, that makes it particularly good, I would say, for indoor filming, where you have multiple characters with multiple dedicated mics. It makes it particularly suited for podcasts or radio interviews where you're on location with many people who need their own separate mics. Or it can be good as a, a live mixer. You can use it as a, a preamp even for sending audio to a camera or something. You can mix six different tracks right here and configure how they're sent out. You can power the machine on using this switch in the top right corner. It operates first using external power that's plugged in right here. After the external power supply is cut off, the next thing it will use is a lithium ion battery pack. Here's one right here, and there's a space for another one right here. When those run out, if they're not replaced while the device is running, it will default to using its six internal AA batteries loaded in right here. in this compartment. So this device has six inputs on it. It's got three XLR mic level inputs and it's got three line level inputs right here. I'm currently plugged into number two. These channels are controlled using all of these knobs on here. Besides these big ones, these small ones can be extended and recessed by pressing them. They click in and out. These gray ones set the trim level, which is like gain except digital. It controls the level of the signal coming into the device. These big black fader knobs, you can hear my voice maybe changing level a little bit as I turn it. These change how present the signal is in the mix and in the headphone monitors. These small ones at the top are the panners. They control how far left or right the signal goes. I have phantom power enabled right now because it's a condenser mic, but if I wanted to change that, I can change it to line level, normal microphone, or just turn the input off altogether using that knob. I can also apply a high pass filter. So most of the controls on this face are for the mic level inputs, but if you want to control these line level inputs right here, you have to use these small mini faders. To activate one of the line level channels, you have to just click it to the right, out from its resting position. And these mini faders themselves only control how loud the signal is in the mix. In order to set the trim, the gain level, like you do for the regular uh, XLR signals, you're going to want to toggle pre-fader listen with this little knob at the top. Toggle it. I'm going to do four because I enabled channel four. And you're going to want to use these knobs to do it. There's trim right here, controlled by the select knob. You can set the trim level. And then you can also set the fader level over here with the headphone knob. All right, so playback and recording is the most important function of this thing, but it's actually kind of easy to miss. It's this knob right here with the, the stop button symbol on it. It's a sort of a toggle. You can click it in and then you toggle it in the different directions. At the very top of the switch is REC for record. You just push it up, not in but up, to start a recording. And then to stop that recording, you can press it in, stop. Or if you wanted to, while it's recording, you can toggle it up to record again and it will just seamlessly move on to the next take and rename it like the next number in the series of takes. You can play back takes by toggling it down. There's a little play symbol under there, a little triangle. And you can flip through which takes you want to play back by toggling this to the left or the right. Headphones can be connected to the device for monitoring uh, right here with a quarter inch jack. By default, You'll hear the left-right stereo mix of everything that's going into the mixer, and you can control the volume with this headphone volume knob right here. 
but if you want to change the mode of monitoring, you can click it in and select from a bunch of useful presets. Here I can get a, a mono version, a mono version of only the left channel. I can listen to the audio only from my aux sends. If you have audio that you're sending from this device out somewhere else and you want to monitor a return signal of that audio, you can plug that in to this input right here by the normal headphone input titled RTN. And then you can toggle between whether you're listening to the regular stereo mix or what's coming back to the device using this switch right here. RTN, you toggle it to RTN and you're listening to your return signal instead of the stereo mix. You toggle it again and you're listening to the normal stereo mix instead of the return signal. This device can send aux signals out of itself using X1 and X2 right here. It's got two stereo outs, a left and a right for the main stereo signal. And it's got X3 and X4 right here. In order to configure what audio of what's being mixed in here goes to which outputs, you should go into the main menu using the menu button, select outputs with the headphone knob, and you can set what kind of signal, like a mic or a line signal, is being sent to each of the outputs. But you can also determine the routing. Using this grid here, you can determine which of the tracks are being mixed goes to what auxiliary send. And you can choose whether you'd like it to go pre-fader or post-fader, depending on the color of the tile. Something that this device is very useful for is for managing and naming your takes. You can manage the takes that you have inside of it by pressing this menu button and this file knob at the same time. You'll jump right to your list of takes. Here's everything that I have recorded in the process of testing this device out. Uh, as you can see, it's actually named them in order. I set the very first one to scene number A1, take A01, and it's automatically continued the naming pattern for me. You can do that by editing your next take. You can add notes and such, but you can set the scene name. Say I wanted to make this one scene B. I'll use this keyboard menu to do it. And say I've fallen behind and we're actually on take five. I can say we're there. And then I go back to the normal view and the next take is going to be BA05. So this device can record to both an SD card and a compact flash card. They go in right here on the device in this port. In order to choose which one gets recorded to, if you want both one or the other, you can go into the main menu, go to recorder, the recorder heading, and you can toggle whether it records to CF, Compact Flash, or to SD, SD card. And there are a few different modes that you can have it record in. There is Wave Poly, which is where it gives you a multi-track wave file of all the different inputs and outputs that's going on in it. You can set it to only the isolated track channels. You can have it send only the stereo mix, or only aux sends. You can also get the stereo mixes in MP3. In the recorder heading, you can also set the bit depth and sample rate, or my favorite is pre-roll time. You can set it to retroactively have had start recording before you actually hit the record button. Say if someone says sound needs to roll and you were about five seconds late, maybe you set it to pre-roll for five seconds it's actually going to listen five seconds ahead of you pressing the record button. If you want to mitigate the effects of unwanted clipping, say if you're worried about something clipping without you expecting it, you can go into menu. You can go to heading four, limiters, and apply a limiter. I have one with a hard neon right now. 
In the main menu, you can also set the time code. This device is capable of receiving time code from an external source, or you can set the global time and date inside of it, and it will generate time code based on that. You can set the mode right here. You can have it based on the running time of the recording. You can have it run freely from when you start time code mode. You can have it run 24 hours or you can have it run externally.